Can you beat Finance of Freddy's Security Breach's ruined DLC if Cassie is tiny? I mean, what could be worse than revisiting this giant destroyed pizza plex filled with deadly animatronics? Well, what if you were only a few inches tall? Yeah, that sounds like an awful challenge, and a challenge it was. Because this small girl Cassie broke the game in ways that had me pulling my hair out in anguish. So join me as I suffer through this Honey I Shrunk the Kids run of FNAF Ruin, because it is certainly going to be a doozy. Enjoy. So we were at the start of the Ruin DLC, and as you can see our character is a little baby. It's like Duke Nukem just came up and hit us with a good old shrinker. Just minus the goofy big hands while we're moving about. Jumping down and approaching the ladder gives us a perspective on just how small we are. What you'll soon learn throughout this playthrough is that every step I take is a risk of slipping through the floor and falling to my death, or simply softlocking the game in an endless fall. We'll go over the reasons on why I think these incidents happen, but until then, let's continue. So I scurry on over with my baby legs and acquire the flashlight. As you can see, our view is altered due to our size. The first person camera's arms don't show up, resulting in us only seeing the beam of light coming from the flashlight. I attempt to go under all sorts of objects throughout this video, but as you can see, I'm having no luck getting under anything at the moment. Although, when getting to the part where Kart is rolled down the stairs at us, I realized I was clipping through the wall, which allowed me to see out of bounds of the map. Small girls got some x-ray vision. Moving forward, we are reminded of our sides with every encounter, like with this guy. But while obtaining the walkie-talkie, you'll notice our character grows back to normal size when interacting with objects like this. As soon as we're done with the interaction, we shrink back to our baby form. It's subtle, but noticeable. But this is because the cutscene animation doesn't use our character's actual model, so our character vanishes while it plays. I could say one advantage we have is while traversing through vents. Due to our size, we're able to move much quicker through vents than we normally would because we no longer have to enter the crouch state. After falling out of the vents, we get an up-close and personal look at these bugs that are all over the floor. They definitely distracted me for a few minutes with their mesmerizing movement. A few moments later, I encounter Chica and then retrieve the Faz Wrench. These conduit panels are annoying to reach, but when doing so, the interaction proceeds as if we are normal size, shrinking us back when the process is over. I'm on my merry way and encounter a spot on the ground in which we're small enough to fall through. Luckily, I was saved by whatever collision I happened to land on. Not so lucky though, because I appear to be stuck, and end up dying anyways. After getting back on track, I'm extra cautious with where I'm walking, as I'm not exactly sure where it's safe to walk. I get jump scared by Monty a couple moments later, and then we initiate this brief cutscene introduction. Boy, do we have a lot of ground to cover still! So because of our size, traversing through rubble like this tends to get disorienting at times. So much so that Maskbot made me jump despite knowing where he was. We get our mask, and we can warp to the other world. And I stress this, this mask ends up being the bane of my existence. You'll notice the animation for putting the mask on is invisible, and this is of course because of our size. However, there is like a 50-50 chance while taking the mask off that our character will fall through the map, which in this case caused me to free fall indefinitely. Loading my save, I get back on track and manage to make it to the first security node, connecting the holograms with no issue. Getting to the next security node, I encounter a strange scenario. I ended up getting stuck in the ground. So I tried to reset my character size momentarily to break free, which caused me to fall through the map and die. However, it's what follows that's interesting. When I load the game up, prior to shrinking myself or anything, I noticed as I tried to take my mask off, I was putting it on again. This would cause me to softlock in this endless void. So when putting the mask on, our character is actually teleported down below the original map to the virtual version, which is what we see while wearing the mask. The process is normally seamless. Well, when you're normal sized, and creates the illusion that we're just putting the mask on. So in this case, where I soft locked into the abyss, my character was actually supposed to be taking the mask off, not putting it on. I somehow broke that sequence, causing Cassie to put the mask on instead, resulting with the game thinking we're in that above map, which is why it decided to teleport us down below to our demise. Needless to say, it was an aggravating situation to fall into, especially since the game saved this glitched state in the autosave. After fixing that mess, I started working on the node, and then had my first run-in with the rabbit's entity. I stood by, as I wanted to see if anything different would happen given my size. Sure enough, Monty shows up and kills me, but not before a few awkward seconds of letting me live, as the death animation sort of glitches out. However, we take out the nodes to the security network and match the holograms with no further issue. The security node that immediately follows proves to be an easy endeavor as well. After this, Monty once again comes for our flesh. I have to make sure I'm jumping accordingly so that I don't get stuck onto objects that are on the ground, or worse, fall through. 
Moving on, this is where I encounter a glitch that is caused by the player size, making the way I have to play a little tedious. It seems like a random occurrence, but while putting the mask on or taking it off, the player glitches out, making it so you are unable to do anything other than jumping. You cannot run or interact with anything. The only way to fix this is by resizing the character to normal size, and then back to the small baby size. I'm not exactly sure why this takes place, but I assume it has to do with the scripted sequence of the mask toggle not finishing 100%. Going forward, we'll call it quote unquote the annoyance for the remainder of this video, as it takes place in almost every section of the game. Now, normally, something like this would stop the run, but honestly, I want to see how much of the game is doable at this size. So we make our way through these giant halls and gain access to the next security node. And another issue then springs up. There are particular nodes in which I cannot reach based on my size, but for the sake of science, we'll regrow and shrink so that we can continue on. Despite our size, Monty clearly wants our blood as we walk on by him. However, I was in the process of completing the next security node when the annoyance took place. So while I was in the middle of resizing the character, I fell through the floor, only to land on the ceiling of the normal world, ultimately getting stuck and having to load up the last save. Bypassing these issues allows me to continue on and complete the rest of this security node. The following section is where we meet our moon friend who finds us to be naughty and has to urge us to turn the generators on. I'm able to clear the anomalies fairly easily. However, I will say once again, the view in the small mode tends to get a bit disorienting in more closed in areas, which is exactly what I was experiencing here. Although we get the first generator and then progress to the next one, I then find myself having issues walking. I was getting stuck in the dips of the floor, which became frustrating as I attempted to escape it. Hearing the audio as I was getting stuck shows just how annoying it was. Take a listen. Once again, I just need to watch where I'm walking and jump over these dips in the ground. But we clear the anomaly, get stuck a few more times, and eventually hop our way to our troubled animatronic, who then flies away to safety in this brief cutscene. The next security node was annoying. I feel as if I may have made it harder on myself though. I started off with the node in the forklift, in which we end up lowering to obtain. Then I decide to try going down this way to the other node, while being stalked by endoskeletons, mind you. However, as you can see, I just get trapped and die for my own fault. My next attempt was an unlucky stopping as I walked right under the endoskeleton's foot. Oof. So I start over and decide to get this one first. During this, the entity nearly gives me a heart attack while heading for the last one. But we obtain it and luckily clear the security node. The theater area doesn't seem to give me much issue, as I'm able to access the cameras and locate the anomalies as you normally would. When heading down this giant endoskeleton's throat, you can see I have some trouble going down as I get stuck on the rims within. It's only momentarily, but I manage to get down to where I need to be. This leads us to the ride through Monty's Gator Golf. Our character automatically goes back to its default size during this ride, and the rest of this is pretty much the same as regular gameplay. However, getting thrown off this cart and into the next section definitely proved to be quite frustrating as a small lady. To be expected, there are a lot of little gaps and holes throughout the walkways of this area, making it easy to fall to our death. Of course, we can't forget the entity, adding the unneeded pressure. However, something broke my game completely because after my death in the augmented reality world, I became stuck in a forever falling loop because my autosave was placing me below the world. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing. Amazing! I think the worst part about this section is that it's hard to tell where I'm at. I'm so darn small that I can't get a good look out and around to help navigate my way around here. Needless to say, it was a struggle bus dealing with the entity and this dangerous terrain. Although eventually, I managed to stay alive long enough to get the rest of the following nodes, allowing us to deactivate this darn security node. I desperately ran back and got out of here as fast as I possibly could. So we make our way out and eventually exit the cart. I casually traverse through this area, which leads me to the one and only Chica. Due to my size, I got a chance to see Chica do a little teleport prior to starting her patrol. I don't run into any tiny person problems during this interaction with Chica, and manage to evade her with no real issues. After escaping to safety from Chica, we managed to enable our ability to use our mask again. It only took a few jumps, but I got it. Now I'm able to access the next security node. I knock out the first one quickly, but as I'm going for the next one, the entity nearly spawns right on top of me, giving me a slight jump scare. So after turning my game volume down a bit, with no sign of the entity, I'm able to obtain the last two, and make my way back to the main security node and clear it. This follows with some back halls that eventually lead us to the Upper East server room. I noticed I was able to slightly clip through the walls of these walkways. Entering the next area of this server room, you can see I'm struggling to get a better view of the room. It sort of gives off the vibes of being in a rat maze. I did have a frustrating laugh when I tried to go up these stairs and simply just slipped through a crack and died. 
I ride some waves my way back, do some good old anomaly detection, and then find myself making a fatal error. I approach this T-section where the entity is slowly distorting my screen. In a panic, I turned the wrong way and had to backtrack to the security station. I detected the anomalies as fast as I could and beeline for the door. Sadly, it ended with Chica devouring my pea-sized soul. I was more fortunate on my second attempt and managed to escape the server room. After traveling through a few halls and some stairs, this is where we encounter Roxy being miserable. I couldn't help noticing when this scene takes place that the game brings Cassie back to her default size. As you can see here, grow back into her arms. However, the rest of the scene plays out normally, as Roxy pursues the voice of Gregory. Following Roxy leads us to our next security node section. I begin following the cords and make my way through this ball pit, leading to this picture of Roxy. After clearing it, the mask locks onto Cassie. Of course, the entity shows up, and I delete it on a little chase, which clears my path to the device I'm after. After disabling it, I immediately take my mask off with great relief. Acquiring the next one sucked because the entity showed up right as I got it, which forces me to frantically run, but luckily it is towards the device I need to reach. Once disabled, I then have a run in with Chica, and it sort of goes downhill from here. The entity joins in with terrorizing me, and I end up getting trapped, leading to Chica gobbling me up like birdseed. During my second attempt, I was actually able to exploit the game due to my size. I was having trouble finding the mask device, but managed to find a spot where the mask lock disables. This spot is not accessible in default size. Needless to say, I take advantage of this, which in the end helps me progress and take care of these anomalies. Shortly after though, Chica hunts me down, and as you can see, I really have nowhere to go. As I was thinking how to approach this, Chica pulls a fast one, it clips through the barrier, and annihilates me. After a couple more failed attempts, I scurry my tiny little self through this disaster of a building, eventually finding and completing the security node. This leads us through a few hallways and stairs, bringing us to this lovely parkour section with Monty. Being small made this part a little more challenging. As you can see, I struggled to get the first platform. I eventually make this annoying jump, but then things immediately get worse as I miss my next jump. Monty is close, but as you can see, he nearly gets me. I struggle trying to get back to safety, but eventually realize that I need to use the corner to get back up. I must say, Monty is much more terrifying when you're the size of a smurf. In the midst of jumping to the door, I miss and try to get up the stairs, and soon realize that I just clipped through them. I can see through to the other room, and I believe I was safe for Monty too. However, I made my way out of there and progressed with opening the door. Gaining entry through this door, I hop my way along these platforms, eventually finding myself waiting out Monty. He's in my personal space, so I wait until he gets a little farther away, and oof. I butcher my jump and decide to just run for the stairs. I seemingly find myself in the same situation as before with clipping through the stairs. Monty didn't appear to be anywhere near me though, so I pull out the handy dandy faz wrench and open the door as poor old Monty gets a shocking surprise. So we push on and make our way through these abandoned halls, some questionable stairs, and eventually make it to the raceway. Of course, Gregory isn't here, but Sapphot is, in all its glory. Ugh. This leads up to the Roxy interaction, in which we have to use the security cameras to lure her away from us, and make an exit for ourselves. We basically follow her to the next camera station, where we repeat the same process. However, I ended up finding myself completely blocked off. Roxy would not budge, and kept me blocked off from progressing. So I just let Roxy destroy me, and luckily, a simple reload solved my problem. The car's headlights being at eye level was intense, but I still managed to dodge it. Heading to the door, we open it and then Roxy gives us a good scare. Poor Roxy. Leading up to the next area, there is a ladder we need to climb, and this ladder is basically going to kill me. Climbing up it is no issue, but as soon as I get to the top, I fall through the floor. Luckily, it was a short fall, but now I'm stuck. However, the view was something else from up here, as we can see the virtual version of the map down below. I noticed I was changed back to normal size again too. Maybe that's why I got pushed through the floor like that? Not sure. Moving on, we push forward into the next section with a security node. In this area, the child nodes are scared about, and our main obstacle is these little music men. It's very similar to our interaction with Roxy, as we need to divert them and clear a path for ourselves. I gotta say, these guys are more terrifying when they are bigger than you. I ran into this one in the bathroom as it cornered me. I was surprised to see that it didn't kill me right away. However, in a glitchy manner, this music man destroys me. Getting back on track, I grabbed my first child node and then unlocked the door that leads to the next security camera station. In a similar fashion, we lure the little music man away from where we want to go and disable the mask locking device. Wandering around like a little music man myself, I realized I need to move them yet again. 
I stand by as I nervously watch them all divert back to Cassie's voice over the intercom. While completing this security node, nothing took place outside of being a baby-sized Cassie, and of course, a few fatal mishaps along the way. I eventually get these two child nodes that aren't too far from one another, and then head to the one by the bowling alley. With a deep breath and some patience, I get the last node, allowing me to scurry back and clear the security node. This leads us backstage, where the player goes through a digital wormhole. That's right, not today, Satan. Ah yes, more vents. However, following this leads us to the next section, where we eventually run into an old friend. I mean, that is, if we don't get stuck in the darn floor. So I slowly, but surely, make my way down into this maze of debris, where there are two child nodes that the player needs to get. Acquiring the nodes was not much of an issue. However, it's what follows the completion of the security node that I had some trouble with. Obviously, most of you will know that this old friend I spoke of earlier is Freddy. The headless bro wakes up from a dirt nap, and it immediately becomes a bad news bearer situation. This initiates a chase that I felt pretty confident with at first. Although, I'm realizing that this train is not the easiest to walk through as a pea-sized Cassie. So, of course, a few seconds later into the chase, I fell through a gap in the floor. I gave up immediately thinking I was dead. But it turns out Freddy was just about as confused as I was. You can see Freddy standing over me, puzzled by my location. I spent a few minutes trying to get out of here and simply just couldn't. At one point, I have a stare down with these remains of Freddy and realize I'm going to have to reload my last save. F in the chat, fam. So I reload my save and I give this another go. Giving more attention to where I'm running, I'm able to navigate this chase without falling through any nooks or crannies. Following with nearly getting stomped out by Freddy. However, we're safe now and, oh yeah, we're not safe. So, taking advantage of our small stature, I jet through these vents and the game crashed. Not surprising, just unfortunate. Seriously, my game has crashed at the spot on several different playthroughs. Anyone else have issues with this area? Luckily, loading up the game again, we hit a save point and start right where it crashed. So that's dope. However, the tone slowly shifts as we traverse the next few areas that eventually lead us to poor Roxy. Other than being at eye level with Roxy, this scene plays out just as depressingly as it would have if we were normal sized, as we heart-wrenchingly deactivate her. Moving forward, we'll find this elevator, which we take down into the familiar ruins underneath the Mega Pizzaplex. This path we traverse goes down pretty deep. It was funny looking while Cassie ran through this particular area with water. Because of our height, it looked as if we were underwater. However, eventually we find the MXES along with Gregory's backpack. Despite knowing it's a bad idea, I deactivate the security protocols. The entity makes his final attempt to get Cassie, and then gets sucked right back in. It's now time to save Gregory though, right? Once again, most people watching will know that, well, there is no Gregory, as Cassie terrifyingly discovers. This follows with another horrific chase that luckily didn't involve any risk of falling through the ground. I make it to the elevator, and funnily enough, I clear the Ruin DLC as a small girl. This was quite the journey, and I will admit, was very frustrating at certain points. It was quite fun though to see what parts were doable. But I hope you enjoyed this bizarre challenge, and if you did, consider subscribing for more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching, and cheers.